This is the secret summon Gilgamesh in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I'm going to show you how to get the secret summon step by step from the start of the game up all the way until when you're able to get it. So depending on where you are in the game, you can go ahead and check out the timestamps down below and click on exactly where you are. I sometimes had a hard time myself with this quest, so I hope this helps and if you have any tips, feel free to share them down below. Let's start off with the grasslands. The first phenomenon intel is going to be located all the way at the top right of the map. This one's pretty simple. All you have to do is sneak around to a gate, climb up, beat up some bad guys, and then you'll be presented with location two. But I want to mention now at location one, just make sure to assess everything, even the people that you're beating up and every single monster and robot we see throughout this quest. That's going to lead us over to phenomenon intel number two, located in this exact area, and it's pretty close to a chocobo stop too. So make sure you go over here. Now for this one, it's essentially playing a little sneaky game so you get around the bad guys and you're eventually going to have a fight with a spearhead one of the monsters assess this monster because it's going to be added into your grasslands monster scan once you're done with this one you're going to unlock the next phenomenon intel 3 which is going to be located at this part of the map phenomenon intel 3 is just basically you beating up a bunch of bad guys and then you're going to discover where exactly a key was hidden so after you're all done your chocobo is going to find a key and that key is then going to lead you all the way to Phenomenon Intel number four. But to get to Phenomenon Intel number four in this location, you have to teleport all the way to the Calm Air Raid Shelter. <laughs> Fast travel, not teleport, but it's the same thing. And then you want to make your way immediately left. This was really exciting because this unlocks the gate that was locked the entire time. And then you can see this very giant area revealing the next phenomenal intel. So when you go over here, you'll find the guys on the floor. And I was really dumb. I'm going to be honest with you. I did not know exactly what to do. But then I realized there is actually a lever to drop the box. So I found that lever right over here. And then I hit that and drop the box and continue it. Let me know if anyone struggled figuring out what to do here. Sometimes I make dumb games mistakes. Once you're done assessing everything you need to during this fight, you're going to then complete this phenomenon intel and these bandits are going to be off. Side note, by doing this phenomenon intel quest, this is later going to open up a side quest that shows up later after chapter 12. So just keep that in mind by doing this, you'll unlock a side quest. After you're done, Cloud is going to get a cutscene, which I'm not going to spoil because I think you should enjoy all these cutscenes for yourself, but it's essentially just a little bit of a Gilgamesh introduction, and you'll get more of these as we complete the quest, and that's all you have to do for Phenomenon Intels. Now, something else that is really important while you're in the grasslands is also completing the sanctuaries, because later on in the video, you're going to see why we need the summon materia to progress in this quest line to unlock Gilgamesh. It's really important. So when you're in the grasslands, you want to be able to unlock Titan Sanctuary Alpha, which is located over here on your map, Titan Sanctuary Beta, which is going to be located in the swampy area on the map, then Titan Sanctuary Gamma, which is going to be all the way west of the grasslands map in the dry area. Once you're all done with all that, you then can go challenge Titan's most powered down version and easily be able to destroy him and then receive Titan Summon Materia. It really doesn't matter what order you do this all in, it's just important that you get all three of these tasks done. And I'm just going to cover every single one as we continue on with the video, depending on where you are in the game. Before we move on to the next region, I just wanted to thank everyone for watching the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth coverage. And if you're watching this, please hit that subscribe button. You're going to get my videos showing up in your feed anyway if you're checking out the channel. And just hitting that subscribe button helps so much. Thank you, and let's keep moving. When you arrive in the Junon region, one of the first towers are going to be the Activation Intel 1 Seabreeze Tower. This is going to reveal the first Phoenix Sanctuary, as well as revealing the first Proto Relic marked as Phenomenon Intel 1 on your map. And if it's giving you a hard time, all you have to do is make sure that you have your Chocobo. So that way you can climb up these various mountain areas to do Phoenix Sanctuary Alpha, located over here on the map. Phoenix Sanctuary Beta, which is gonna be located all the way at the top right of the map. Very interesting spot that they put it. And then the final one is going to be the Phoenix Sanctuary Gamma, which is gonna be all the way at the south end of the map. And thanks to comments, I found out you don't have to just do a side quest to unlock the right side of the map, but you can actually get to it by entering from the south side of the map to complete the divine intel stuff. You just can enter into the crow's nest, so you can enter in from the south if you explore. If not, you can just unlock this via a side quest. Now let's talk about Phenomenon Intel 1, which is located over here 
on your map. And this is just going to be my strategy of how I defeated it. Of course, feel free to mention down in the comments below your strategy and what you would do better than me because I'm not perfect and I would love your input for the community. The first thing you want to pay attention to when you start the Fort Condor game is the pre-setup. You can see next to the right of enemy units that they're going to have five red units, three blue units, and four green units. That's the max amount of units that they will spawn during this fight. So you can prepare ahead of time knowing how to counter. Now, when I did my gameplay, this wasn't something I was really paying attention to because otherwise, when I started off the match, I would have started off by dropping down a bunch of blue units during the fight. So during this gameplay, you can see I start off really newbie by throwing in my red units to fight red units, but the ideal scenario would be to throw in blue units. What you would want to do for this fight is throw in your initial units, most likely blue, and then place some rangers behind them. That way, while the enforcers are in the front line, the rangers are going to be in the back being able to support them. It's also great to throw down clerics because clerics can also do attack damage and start healing your units that are in the front lines. That's pretty much the goal here. Something else that you want to pay attention to during these fights is as your team progresses, that line is going to move up further and further so you can place your units towards the front line as you're pushing up against the enemy. A big mistake I also made during my first couple of gameplays was throwing units in the back line to have them move forward. That would make it a lot harder to put pressure on the enemy. So as your line moves forward in the match, make sure to keep dumping units in the front line. And you can see that we are destroying the, the big enemy outpost on the left and right over time and then during the match you'll also see that you could throw in your hero units now normally hero units are really good when the enemies are pushing up on your position and you drop your hero unit to nuke their unit so in this clip you can see that i'm just throwing in cloud and tifa because at this point my units are doing all the work but i have the option so i throw them in now as we move further up in the proto relics you're going to see the better times to start using your main hero units but essentially we took down the first boss very simply the next phenomenon intel is going to be located right over here on your map. So when you start it, you're going to look at your intro screen and see that they're going to have three attack units, four defense units, four range units, and then they're going to have this, three unmarked units. And you want to really pay attention to exactly what they are. It's going to be an arch fiend who's going to be able to deal 120 damage with 100 health. And guess who does 100 damage that would destroy the 100 health? It's your condor units right over here, these guys. Followed up by a Wyvern, who's going to have 200 health, but do less damage. So they're going to have a lot tankier foe. And then the other big hefty ones you probably have to worry about are just going to be the Cutter and Sweeper. So just keep in mind what the big unit HPs are, and that's how you're going to adjust your strategy. And the cool thing is, if you weren't paying attention, it shows you exactly the lane and order that these enemies will come down on. So you can pay attention right to this. They're gonna start off with a red unit, so you're gonna counter immediately with blue units on the right side. That is probably gonna be the most important thing when starting your game. So you can see I'm going in ahead here and dropping elite enforcers right away. Now on the left side, it's open, so I'm also gonna have a unit push in that progresses on the left side while my right side gets to work here. I've also dropped two ballistas in the back lines, so they can do work from further back. Why also send up units in the front line. Now you can see that my right side is starting to get very overwhelmed and now I'm able to bring in cloud. So the best location that I could probably bring in cloud is going to be right on top of this enemy here and nuking their very powerful enemy. Cloud can now push forward on the lines with this entire squad around that ballista. Next up in the fight, you can see that they're moving in with left side units with starting off with the blue unit. I'm gonna start throwing in some range units to deal damage to the blue units. So while the left side is occupied, I'm gonna focus on putting some pressure on the right side by dropping in units there who will destroy their tower. You can see the left units are now moving towards the middle spot, easily going into a fight. So anything in the back lane for the enemies, now they'll have to deal with my units that are more forward. And as the units on the left side die, you can see the line push up in the front and then we could just send in more troops after more troops and then once the left side is focused we start pushing the left side units onto the enemy and the right side units are then going to deal with the new stuff that shows up but that's exactly how it's going to work at this point most of the enemies are pretty much done and we can just focus the entire squads on destroying these last two enemies and then we can further push up and destroy the middle boss that's pretty much it and how it's done i kind of goofed on the bottom left though because some of my rangers are stuck there behind the ballista so don't put a ballista blocking the the left pathway like i did and then at this point you pretty much can nuke the middle enemy the next phenomenon intel is going to be located all the way over here so it's just really moving in a line towards the east and this one's called princess in another castle haha <laughs> 
Mario reference, everyone. So for Phenomenon into number three, we're going to deal with three red units, two blue units, two rangers, and then three unmarked, which are going to be pretty strong. You got a Archfield, you got Wyverns, and you got Warlords. Uh, so we're going to keep in mind exactly what they're doing here. We're going to pay attention in game when we start by watching exactly what they're going to throw on the right and left. And you can see they're already starting off with a Warlord coming in on the right side followed by a ranger on the left side. So you're going to kind of know what you have to throw ahead of time. So I drop a red unit on the left side, followed up by just my big bulky defense units on the right side, as we're going to have to deal with the warlord. I drop a cleric behind that unit, so that way it can heal up while we're in the middle of the fight, and a cleric on the left side. <laughs> we also have to be very weary of the cannon in the middle that's doing a lot of damage. I send up my units as this is continuing on. We're nuking the enemy on the left and I'm sending in as many as I can as we have the advantage on the front lines. So to deal with this guy, I'm throwing my enforcer down the middle lines to deal with the middle ones so he doesn't completely nuke the guys on our left side so they can deal damage with the tower. That's essentially it. When you have advantage of the line, you want to deal as much damage as you can to these enemy towers as soon as possible. Now the left side you can see is starting to get busy as we're going to get units spawning that are blue. So then we want to focus on the right side with enemies that are blue. Now this wolf can bypass your entire units and push forward. This happened at this point so I try to get as many enforcers down in the front lines as possible so it doesn't destroy my tower completely which would absolutely suck. And by the way, the wolf isn't even focused on my units. Again, I throw Cloud down in the early part of the game just so we can nuke that wolf early. My left side is going to continue to do damage and I'm going to keep sending in rangers on the left side. So now we're at this point where we are, we are doing heavy damage. We're breaking towers and we just have enemies on the left side that we are destroying. Next up, you can see that the wyvern is going to show up on the right and then we have some red units coming on the left that can completely nuke the rangers in the front line. So I have to be aware and very careful of this. So with the amount of overwhelming units, we are wearing down the towers at this point. I throw in some enforcers while we do have the front line and the enemies are focusing on my ranger units. That way we can deal with that while also taking out the tower. So Cloud's doing his best here. We get it to 50%. The rest of the units are now moving on the right side to do some damage and you want to keep dropping units in at this point point. and as we take out this enemy more enemies spawn but they're going to be a lot more overwhelmed by the amount of units i do have so around this point in a minute where i get the enemy pretty low it does this move where it just nukes all of my units so you pretty much have to start over again but they really don't have any units at this point so i'm just sending in as many units as I can to take out their last ranger and we can easily push this line forward so just get a bunch of units range units should be fine because they're going to be safer at a distance in case there's any more stomps but yeah at this point it's a joke because you push the line up so far you win and that's how you destroy this one completely and get through proto relic number three and you save princess peach the fourth phenomenon intel is going to be located all the way up here on the map and it's the final one this means that this is going to be the the hardest fight in the game depending on how you approach this but don't worry I got you covered you can see that they're now focusing on five enemies that don't have any affiliation with any of these classes and I'm focusing primarily on being defensive because there are a lot of aggressive enemies in this one so starting off we want to pay attention to what the middle boss is going to be it's going to be a ranged enemy and I'm also going to be paying attention just like we did previously before to the enemies on the sides. Now for the right side, I primarily am focusing on dropping as many enforcers as possible so we have a really strong line. As you can see on the left side, I dropped a red unit and I'm going to also drop another ranger so they have protection. Right side, we're going hardcore enforcers. So you can see how much work we're doing here. The one thing you want to be aware of is the wolf that sneaks up on your back line just runs through to go destroy your tower. So just drop some units in the back line to deal with that and that should be okay. Pretty simple. The Warlock is going to do a lot of damage as it is a range, but as your team moves up, you can see that I dropped a Ballista right in front of it. So this thing is going to shoot and do damage to the boss over time, which is going to probably be what's going to help you win this game. So when you make take advantage, the most important thing about this fight, drop that Ballista. That's going to probably help you the most. Now, at this point, you can see that as we are advancing on, our Ballista is doing damage, but our Warlock is now in a defensive mode. So it switched from green to blue, and we have about 60 seconds left. They sent in another Wolf, which is extremely dangerous, and it's going to try to clean off my left side. And I got to be careful because I still have to keep my towers alive. So I drop in two Enforcers in the back line, and in the front line here, you can see that the Warlock now has switched to the red mark 
and is starting to destroy my units. So at the third part of his phase, he's going to basically freeze anything close range. So the only thing that's going to help you win is going to be Rangers and your Ballista, which is super OP. As you can see, it's still fighting and going. So I just throw a bunch of clerics in and a bunch of Rangers and the Ballista. And that's pretty much how I destroyed this entire fight. That's the key to winning this one. And when you do complete all the Phenomenon Intels here, you're also going to be able to unlock hard mode. So if you feel a lot more confident, you can now go ahead and try that game mode. And you can enjoy all the Gilgamesh cutscenes for yourself now. The next time you'll be getting access to any sanctuaries is going to be in chapter 7 once you are able to add Yuffie to your party and enter into the Corel region. Now in the Corel region there's going to be one sanctuary located right over here, Alexander Sanctuary Alpha. You can lower the power of Alexander and I was able to actually beat Alexander just by powering it down at 1. It wasn't too hard, just make sure to assess it. You should be able to get the Alexander summoning materia. Now you have to go through through chapter 7 and go through this entire area all the way up to here North Corral region and then after that you enter chapter 8 to go to the gold saucer but after chapter 8 you're going to enter chapter 9. Now in chapter 9 is when you get access to the whole entire southern coral region and that's where you're going to be able to get access to a vehicle that you could traverse across this beautiful desert. You'll be able to find divine intel Alexander Sanctuary Beta here at this location and you'll be able to find divine intel 3 Alexander Sanctuary Gamma right over here in this spot. So after you do all those three things, your Alexander will be powered up all the way, which is going to be necessary for the quest line. Now, let's talk about Proto Relics because it's very confusing in this region and I was actually stuck for a really long time. For this region, you'll be able to do Phenomenon Intel 1 Treasure Protector G. Pretty much for Phenomenal Intel 1, there's going to be a giant sand Gilgamesh in this area uh, that pops up and looking for Proto Relics and all you have to do is approach one of these green bubbly looking buildings that has a door that protects you from going inside and then you're going to grab this Cactar statue that's going to beam a light in the direction where you need to go. Once you beam that light, you're going to head over to that exact location, battle some cactars, then you'll be able to come back and open up the door. That's the gist of how the beginning of this works. Once you enter into the first building, you're going to be going downstairs and then you're going to meet someone very interesting in the game. But that's not the point of this. The challenge that you have to do is be able to clear off all these cactars in a certain amount of time and you're going to start off with Yuffie. The trick to complete this entire thing and get the maximum score is just to use Windstorm with Yuffie. After that, you're going to be done with Phenomenon Intel 1. The next location is going to be Phenomenon Intel 2, which is pretty much going to be the exact same thing. Cloud approaches the green bubbly area, you're going to pick up the statue, it's going to point towards a rock, you go to the rock, you fight some cactars, then you come back and the door opens. For this specific challenge, you're going to have to use Aerith. So for Aerith's trial, it's pretty simple. You're going to be able to cast an anti lightar Luminous Ward and basically an anti darktar Shadow Basic Ward. I'm going to be honest, I really didn't pay attention too much to this. I just made any ward possible and used use the move Sorceress Storm and that seemed to do the trick because all the cactars just run into the center and Sorceress Storm is basically just going to nuke every single one of them. I was then told I finished these tasks too quickly and I would be contacted for the rest of the Phenomenon Intel. And now something for you to note is that I wasted hours trying to figure out how to get Phenomenon Intel 3 and 4 to activate but it doesn't activate at all until later in chapter 12. So we'll come back to the coral region when it's time for that. So when you're in chapter 9, just do these and that's it. So you'll never be able to finish the next two Phenomenon Intels until later. So don't get stuck here and move on with your game. Let's move to the Gangaga region, which is going to be literally right after you clear out the South Corel region. You just take your truck here and boom, you're in the Gangaga region. Now the first thing that you'll probably be able to do is going to be the Divine Intel 1 Kujata Sanctuary Alpha. This one at least lower this summon by one power that way if you want to take it on in Chali simulator you can or not i actually didn't do it i decided to just do the entire region first but before you can even explore the region you have to complete all of the story in gongaga that it's a lot it's a lot of story it's very story heavy but once you're all done with that and you get access to the airfield you can pretty much then explore the entire area on chocobo now this place has a lot of mushrooms that you can use to jump with your chocobo so what's going to be important here is grabbing all the other divine intel so the kujata sanctuary gamma and kujata 
Sanctuary Beta, which is located right over here in this area. So make sure to get all that because getting Kujata is necessary for our Gilgamesh quest. Once you get your Kujata quest, you then have to do the phenomenon intel of this area. The first one is going to be located all the way down south over here called the Turks Training. And basically, this is not going to be hard at all. It's just going to be a simulation that is like a Turks Training. It's basically just combat simulator in a bunch of different locations. So the first one, you're going to battle some things at this location the second one is going to be located over here at this location and once again you'll be battling even more things here the third one it's going to be located at the corral shore and from that is where you're going to be finding the phenomenon intels you have to go through this little town over here to get to it and pretty much again same thing it's going to be just battling people in the simulator and then the final intel is going to be located all the way over here and this phenomenal intel is just going to be the final one at a more difficult level where you face off against the turks but they're not real it's all simulation so nothing really that crazy and it's pretty easy it's just battling no puzzles once you're all done with that you'll be teased with another gilgamesh scene which you can enjoy for yourself and that's going to summarize the gungaga region in terms of what you have to do for the gilgamesh quest now let's move on to the next one if you've reached chapter 10 it's going to be the cosmo canyon region and you're going to have to complete the main story which is pretty much getting to the town itself and once you're in the town there's going to be a lot of running around and basically a lot of story with red and then once that's all done which i'm not going to spoil of course you're then going to get access to take this elevator that lets you go into the area of the cosmo canyon region now the regular cosmo canyon region is just a ton of flying around with your chocobo by finding locations which are pretty much gliding ranges and you're going to have to use this to your advantage like the gungaga region has mushrooms the cosmo canyon region has a bunch of fans that lift you up in the air and your job is pretty much just to use these to get to your various locations and you're going to have my favorite summon available to you in this game so make sure to go ahead and hit all these sanctuaries which actually starts to get a little bit difficult at this point with memorizing where the button inputs are a quick trick that i use once these sanctuaries start to get a lot harder is taking a screenshot of them and if you're using a pc with a capture card you can go ahead and obs and throw a screenshot of the exact same picture and then lower the opacity of it that way you can just follow it easily and hit the buttons on your remote control otherwise you gotta really get the timing down when trying to do these sanctuaries the first one is going to be located right over here divine intel one Bahamut Arisen Sanctuary Alpha. All the way up north in this location is going to be Bahamut Arisen Sanctuary Beta. And all the way to the south part is going to be Divine Intel 3, Bahamut Sanctuary Gamma. Once you're done with all that, you can visit Chadley and then start the Bahamut Arisen fight, which is a lot of fun and it wasn't too hard to do once it was powered all the way down. The next summon after this actually almost wiped me on even the lowest power. So let's just keep going till we get there. The first first phenomenon intel one on your map is going to be located over here and i don't want to even go into any story spoilers so we're just going to go right to the part where there's a robot and it initiates what you're going to be doing so basically what's going to happen is it's going to open up into a screen where you have a bunch of robots that are going to go ahead and attack a king flan essentially this mini game is going to be played almost like the fort condor one except you're just surrounding around three triangles sending in a bunch of robots to destroy a boss for this boss you can see that its strategy says deploy robots with elemental affinities to which the enemy is weak but do not assign them all to the same lane because if you do that the boss is going to use a potent attack if they're all in the same lane and destroy them for my portal skills i'm using an offensive loadout so i can use an aroga and comet at any time during this match now the strategy for this is very simple when the boss throws out a slime i'm going to go ahead and throw out a counter slime if needed and i'm going to be placing a bunch of other ones around the portals so as soon as that little orange bar in the bottom corner hits the icon i can then send out one of my own robots so that's the way i'm going to play it so i i kind of rotate around as much as i can and try to play super effective bots against the enemies ones that they're throwing out at me as the match progresses and the 
the boss starts throwing out even more enemies at me while my bots are moving closer, I'm going to use my Aroga skill and then go ahead and just nuke whatever enemies are there in the center while also damaging the boss, which is, takes place around 2 minutes and 7 seconds. I send in multiple robots from different angles so they can keep doing damage to this boss. When the enemy summons even more, I go ahead and drop a Comet dead center, which does even more damage to the boss around a minute and 55 seconds. At this point, the boss only has one summon in the middle and my robots continue to move in from multiple sides, making this fight finish off easily. And the boss gets defeated with about one minute and 40 seconds left. And all my portals are protected from this. The next location for Phenomena Intel 2 is going to be located here. And it's going to take a bit of maneuvering to get to this spot. But once you get here, again, we're skipping all story here because it's very emotional and deep. That's all I'm going to say. So please beat these to get to the emotional part. But also we're getting to Gilgamesh. Uses the screen that you're going to be presented with. And I'm doing another offensive loadout for this one. So we're going to go ahead in this fight. Make sure you don't line up too many of your units in the same spot. And that's how we're going to go. So they lead off with a thunder slime. And I'm just going to go out and throw out my ice robot immediately to the fight. Followed up by a red robot. As soon as I start to place down enough robots to deal with those, I'm going to start to move around to get other robots into the area. So, so I pretty much get three fire robots to do some damage at the start with about two minutes and 18 seconds left. They're just getting to work. I got four in one lane doing some work. I just have to be careful that the boss doesn't do too much to me. When I notice other slimes pop up in other locations, I'm then going to immediately drop down another robot. Remember, you want to keep these slimes away from your portals because if they damage the portals it's going to be game over for you so you really want to prioritize protecting them as much as you can the cool part though is you can see all the other robots i have from the other lane doing damage while we're focusing on getting these robots to defend this crystal now around one minute and 51 seconds the boss spawns in about three slimes and i'm immediately going to use an aroga to wipe out all three summons as well as deal damage to the boss itself so you can see its chunk of health go down right after we use the aroga and we get rid of these enemies it has with it i'm then dropping a comet on one of the ones close by so my entire robot army can go ahead and take down what it needs to and just like that just with two lanes i was able to destroy phenomenon intel number two so that was my strategy if you want to follow through with that one for this but we're going to move on to the third one now phenomenon intel three is going to be located all the way on this side and of course as usual it's going to take a bit of maneuver to get to this location but once you do you can initiate the third fight these are the player units that i have and the builds that the robots are having you can also set automatically auto program the gambits that these robots have so you're perfectly fine for my portal skills in this one i went with a regen and with a comet that way we could start healing because things are getting worse as we're progressing and you want to pay attention to this boss because as it gets weaker it's going to change its affinity and weaknesses so that's something you want to keep in mind during this so let's go ahead and start this one as the time counts down we're going to see exactly what it throws out and the boss is going to lead out with a thunder slime so i'm just going to immediately go ahead and counter with a blizzard robot because that's the one that's going to deal the most damage followed up by that i drop another blizzard robot at another corner and then immediately i will drop a fire robot so now we're going to hit this thing from three angles completely at around two minutes and 40 seconds and we are doing some damage we've protected all the crystals at the start so we're pretty okay so i always want to keep making sure at this round i'm just dropping out robots as much as i can so i sometimes will delay a little just so i can get the best robots out here the longer you wait the more robots you can spawn in so this one the strategy is really just to rotate around and around two minutes you can see that we've already nuked its first phase we're in phase number two and you can see that it does shift into the ice one and because we have robots attacking from all sides it's now running a lot lower in health at this point, it's going to go for a 1-2 splat in the air, and I'm immediately going to slap down a regen so I can start regenerating anything that was close by. I did miss a couple, but now I can pretty much throw a Comet in the middle and take out as many enemies as I can. So just make sure to arrange your Comet in a way where it hits one of its minions, and then you can nuke it pretty quick. This one wasn't too bad. Just a lot more rotating and doing some damage. As you can see, I didn't even take out all the slimes during this match, and we got it down at around 1 minute and 13 seconds. Phenomenon Intel number 4 is going to be located over here at the left side of the map, right around this area where you have to walk up these steps, and you'll find it all the way at the top. 
As usual, we'll be skipping the story, so let's just go into the part where we initiate the mini game for this. So here are the units I have, currently what they're all on. My portal skills for this one is going to be a hybrid loadout again, using regen and comet. You just want to make sure that you're looking at what the enemy does, and it says that when it's attacked by several robots, it's going to use potent abilities, and losing HP is just going to make it stronger and stronger and stronger. This king clan, which I call the boss, is going to be everything that sucks about changing elemental and just being a little annoying. But let's get into the match so I can show you how I defeated this pretty much in a minute. So. Here we go, let me walk you through everything here. So the match starts off, it'll start off with the electric flan. It's starting to seem a little more familiar to you at this point. It spawns in two exactly electric ones, and the counter to electric is going to be ice. So I drop down two of them as fast as I possibly can, so they can get to work on this, because there's a bigger one and a smaller one. So a bunch of ice ones to start this off. As soon as I get a third one, I drop three ice ones, so we get three blizzard shots happening then spawn in another robot to counter their next one that they spawn around 2 minutes and 28 seconds. So here we go, we're dropping in a fire one to take out the ice. My ice ones are doing work on the other side. At 2 minutes and 6 seconds, I go ahead and I place down another one at the corner that was empty. So I drop in my electric one. I go back to the first lane where I had blue robots around 154, and I just start rotating and seeing where's the, where there are less enemies and start sending out units as fast as possible over there while trying to defend against these little flans that are coming at me here. So tier 2 robots defending those at around a minute and 48, and the rest of my bots are just doing damage to this boss. So boss HP gets low, it shifts elemental phase to lightning, which is perfect for my ice bots that are in that lane. I'm then going to slap a big comet on this boss, taking out some of its minions, and try to defend my portal with a tier 3 robot around a minute and 30. Now, about a minute and 20 seconds, this boss is just being annoying, and it's getting targeted, and just getting angry, and doing damage. So I'm just going to keep popping out robots as much as I can, while also defending, and my HP on my barriers actually is getting low here. So it's about 791, which is pretty dangerous. Dangerous, but because I have other units at other spots, it's more of a race of is the boss going to go down first or am I going to lose my portal? And it looks like I beat the boss here. So that's pretty much how I did it. Feel free to copy it or adjust it. And please let me know your strategies that you used for this instance. I'm very curious on what you all would have done for this. After that, you'll probably get some cutscene, but that's okay, because we're not even talking, we're not even going to show you that. It's then actually going to lead into a scene with uh, Gilgamesh and you get to fight him. For the first time, uh, it's just a small fight, and I'm not going to really go too much into it. Just, you know, right on the platform that they've been teasing the entire game. And after this, you return back to your reality again. And that reality is us heading on towards the next region, which is going to be the Nibelheim region in chapter 11. Now the Nibel region is going to be chapter 11 and the only thing that you're going to be really able to do here is go after the sanctuaries for Odin, which are all reachable in the game. So there's Divine Sanctuary Odin Alpha 1 located right over here. Odin Sanctuary Beta, which is also going to be located pretty much on the mainland. And the final one is going to be Odin Sanctuary Gamma located all the way on the top left now these are really easy to access the first thing you want to do is literally just grab this chocobo this chocobo is able to get you anywhere in the nebo region because it powers up in the water it's really awesome but for the odin quest all you got to worry about is getting those three sanctuaries using your bird now in order for you to start any proto relic quest you actually have to beat the entire story in the nebo region complete the msq here you'll then get notification that the proto relic quests are now available in the area now because the the proto relics in this area are super spoilery in terms of what happens with black robed people i'm going to not really go over them at all so just know for the proto relic quest it's about entering a bunch of different facilities throughout the map and making your way there and seeing exactly where these robe men lead into and fighting a bunch of monsters that's going to be the premise of it but the story you have to pay attention to because there's a lot that's going to shock you during this proto relic quest you're going to be able to fight a version of gilgamesh within the nebel region and i'm not going to see how this happens exactly but you get to fight him so look forward to that in the nebel region 
Remember that phenomenon intel that we left alone in the corral region that you didn't complete? Well, after you complete the main story in chapter 12 in the gold saucer, you're going to get a notification from Chadley popping up saying that you could pretty much head back into the corral region. When you arrive there, you'll see that phenomenon intel 3 is opened up on your map and you can head over to this exact location right over here. You're going to head back there to the phenomenon intel and it's pretty much going to be the exact same thing picking up a cactus statue, going to find where that light leads, then coming back and going down and doing a trial against a bunch of cactars, except they're a lot bigger and higher level. Just remember for this Phenomenon Intel 3 to use Windstorm on Yuffie, and when you're at Phenomenon Intel number 4, doing all the same things again, all you're going to have to do is just use Eret Sorceress Storm. After this is complete, there'll be a secret island that spawns called Gilgamesh Island that we're going to have to make our way to. At this point, you should not proceed further if you do not have all the summons maxed out or if you have not completed your Proto Relic quest. Because when you hop on the Tiny Bronco, you're going to get a cutscene for Chapter 13, but obviously you don't have to go towards Chapter 13 directly. But pretty much you want to set sail on the Tiny Bronco from Costa del Sol port all the way up until this point here on the map in the Meridian Ocean. At this point, it'll be very obvious where Gilgamesh is because you'll see something that represents where he's from the Tory gate from there you're going to enter into that Tory gate it's a very long pathway until you arrive on Gilgamesh Island you approach the middle get a little cutscene and then you'll be told that you have to take these proto relics and basically power them up this is where you're going to see Proto Relic start showing up on your map. Proto Relic 1 is going to be the fight with Gilgamesh, so you won't be able to do that until you finish the other three. So head east first to Phenomenon Intel 2. You'll notice that Cloud is going to take out the summon material and place it on this altar. And your first fight is going to be against two summons at once. You're going to be fighting Titan and Bahamut Arisen. Both of these summons do a lot of heavy attacks. If you want to do some damage on Titan, use some Wind Elementals. And fighting Bahamut Arisen, the best way to take it out is just by using synergy skills and synergy abilities as that's going to weaken it as that one's the tough one out of the two. Once you defeat both of these, you're going to be done with Phenomenon Intel 2 and you can head over to the next shrine. This next fight is going to be the one to the west, which is going to be against the Summon Phoenix and Kujata. For this fight, you want to take a big priority on taking out Phoenix because Phoenix has that lovely re-raise ability and you do not want to kill Kujata first and have Phoenix re-raise it again from the dead, which is something I completely did for some reason in my fight. So I had to take down Kujata twice. Don't do what I do. Take out Phoenix first and then focus on Kujata and this fight should easily be able to go down pretty fast for you. Once you're done with this fight, the last one remaining is going to be Phenomenon Intel 4, Isle Out of Space and Time. This one's going to be all the way north and Personally, this one's tough. It's going to be up against Alexander and Odin. The strategy that I basically did was beat up Odin as much as I can first because Odin will then disappear. When Odin wasn't on my game screen anymore, I just went ahead to Alexander and started using electric attacks and attacking its arms as fast as possible. And every time Odin showed up during the fight, we just did damage and to continually just keep hitting Odin. That way, Odin would not have to cast it's dangerous attack and do major damage to my party with one HP remaining. So that was the goal here. And this fight can go on for a little bit of time. But if you manage to balance that strategy out of just hitting Odin and then going after Alexander, you should be perfectly fine. After completing Phenomenon Intel 2, 3 and 4, you're then going to make your way to the center of the map where you're going to be fighting Gilgamesh. Now for Gilgamesh, you don't really have to be max level in this game at all. You can be in the high 40s and early 50s to do this fight. So for this fight, Gilgamesh is pretty much going to be weak against fire and a lot of detrimental status effects like poison and debrave. You basically can weaken him to do a lot of damage. Now, in order to add pressure to Gilgamesh, make sure you, of course, are assessing every single boss. You'll note that if you do perfect blocks or enough damage, you'll cause him to drop the weapons that he picks up. And the cool part about this fight is he'll just continually pick up cool weapons. That makes it really fun. But pretty much it's really easy. Just a lot of damage, block as much as you can, and then you can easily take out Gilgamesh. Once you're done, you will then obtain the summon and in your transmuter, 
you'll get access to some special items that you need a crafting level 16 for that we'll probably cover in another video. Not only do you get Gilgamesh's summon materia, but Chadley also then gives you new options for battle simulations that give you a lot of strong prizes. And on top of that, they have little simulations where you can fight with Zack and Sephiroth. Crazy stuff, I know, but that's one of the rewards. And now you've got the secret summon Gilgamesh, but you should click on my face here to see the next video because you might have missed a secret over here and hit that subscribe button too.